I was at Reliable Gun in Vancouver the other day, visiting with Nick and Sean and, and the crew there. And they brought out an action. They know I'm interested in all kinds of new products. So I think I have quite an interesting show for you. Um, I'll give you a little bit of background though. You know, when you have a channel like this, uh, you, you get approached by all kinds of people. And I've looked, especially past five years, at a lot of actions. And some I didn't end up making a video. A lot of them have like kind of, let's say, exotic features. Uh, some had light primer strikes and things like that. And I don't like saying anything bad about a product or about a person because the product can be improved. Um, you know, you bring to, to the attention of the ma maker or manufacturer what's wrong or what looks like it's wrong. And then maybe they can improve. So rather than having some kind of negative commentary, which doesn't do anything, um, I just try to stay accurate with my videos. That's a lot of, of blabber. Um, what can I say about this action? So I'll turn it around. I mean, right away, it looked to me like somebody had thought everything through. And I can tell you that this is a, a positive review with some surprising features. I think this product will do very well. So the company is pristine. You probably have not heard of it. I, I had not heard of it, although apparently they do have guns and actions out there in different sizes. Um, it doesn't say what size this is. Uh, I'm assuming it's their short action. It looks like it's ready for 308. Um, I don't have obviously a barrel on it. I didn't, it, it didn't come with this trigger. Um, this is an old Kanjar trigger uh, for a Model 700 action. I usually have some triggers around, so, you know, a box full of triggers. And uh, this is a cool one. Um, this is a Kanjar trigger. I had this on a target rifle once, and this trigger is so, can be tuned so light. That's why the, why the trigger itself is just a lightweight piece of aluminum. Because if you move the rifle harshly, the momentum of the weight of a steel trigger would fire the rifle. So um, this, yeah, that's just a footnote. Anyway, I put on a more regular Kanjar trigger. Uh, they stopped making them decades ago, but they're still a great trigger. So I put a trigger on so that I could see what's what with the action. And I actually have a Savage barrel. This is threaded for a Savage barrel. It has a floating bolt head, which is an excellent idea. And I have a Savage rifle here, which I'll show you. So we'll close this action. It has a bunch of things going on. You know, perfection comes in degrees and really knowing what's important in, a, in an action. And there have been so many bolt actions. So we're ready to go now. And the Kanjar trigger is, um, it's actually almost a perfect trigger. Fires beautifully. If you notice that this movement is Fairly easy, bear in mind, I have no stock to hold on, no barrel to hold on to. It only takes four pounds to lift this bolt handle. Um, I, I didn't measure because I never figured out how to measure these bolt handle lifts. I wanted to compare it to my Nasika. Uh, of course, I would have to place the measure at the same location on the bolt handle. I just didn't want to get into it. And I have about a half dozen actions to show you. This is an excellent action. If you wonder what's going on here, Nasika, uh, Sturgis, South Dakota. I think they purchased Dakota Arms, some business arrangement there. It's a right bolt, left port, which you may or may not have seen. Uh, I like the right bolt, left port configuration just because when I'm at the range, I work the bolt with the right hand and drop rounds in with the left. It's a, you know, I have it set up usually as a single shot, although this could be dressed with bottom metal. Anyway, this, this is a conventional, you know, two, um, two, two lug bolt, but probably worth it to take it out. There you can see 
a regular bolt. And then here's this um, beautifully made pristine bolt. You can see it's, it's not a wide body bolt and the locking lugs are within the diameter of the bolt body, which gives you a smooth, a really smooth action. Actually, uh, we tested smoothness and I brought out the Tika T3. And the Tika T3, I think, and T3X, and maybe there's a T3Y now, I don't know, is known for being very slick and it's still very slick. Uh, but I asked some people who aren't that familiar with guns and they picked the pristine. I think, uh, I think you would too. It's really slick. And that four pound bolt lift is because they installed a roller inside so that it isn't just camming open. It's facilitated by roller. By the way, have a look at that. You can see how that bolt handle is retained. And I, I'll take out the Tika and you can see on the T3 uh, a very similar arrangement. When I first saw the pristine bolt handle, I thought maybe the Tika bolt handle would interchange, but I didn't take them off because at first look, I think this is larger than the, than the pristine. Uh, but anyway, so the Tika kind of, you know, typical two lug bolt. Everybody knows how great that rifle is. This, by the way, is not a factory um, handle. I replaced it for unknown reasons. And the Tika, obviously, excellent rifle. So getting back to the pristine, uh, you'll see some uh, whiteout here. So this I call the whiteout test. I'm sure I'm not the inventor. You'll see right here on all six lugs. Um, so what am I up to? Well, it started out years ago, uh, I was, I don't know, talking guns with somebody and we were talking about the Weatherby Mark V. So here's my current Weatherby Mark V, 6.5 by 300, uh, just phenomenally flat shooting cartridge. And, uh, and for some reason, not so popular. You know, people are always talking about burning out barrels and things like that. Um, I didn't notice a thing. Anyway, there's the Weatherby bolt. And you can see some white out there. So getting back to that conversation, we were discussing, you know, it's got nine locking lugs. The pristine has six. Uh, when, when I came up with this white out thing, or whoever came up with it, uh, there was no pristine, obviously. And so we, you know, check this out and the Weatherby is almost always great like all nine lugs actually engage in in the action and you can see the lugs are also within the diameter of the bolt body which is a smoothness advantage the bolt head on the Weatherby is not floating on the pristine it is anyway that's why the whiteout is there this is easily removed and so um it, yeah, you know, with a floating bolt head, you have to use a little bit of back pressure. Obviously, I couldn't use a dummy cartridge, um, but that, that's easily solved. So, yeah, um, perfect locking and connection in the action. Uh, apparently, this is very easy to disassemble, uh, but I've only had this action for like a matter of hours. Uh, so I didn't take apart the bolt, but that'll be something to explore. The bolt handle very easily removed, if I understand that Allen screw there. And the bolt head easily changed. And the whole concept, if I understand it, is to have an action that's compatible with certain Remington components and Savage barrels and, and the features of the Savage with the with the bolt head. And here's the Savage barrel that I have around. Uh, this is for a target um, Savage, so it, 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 I threaded it in and everything, it fits, but it's, it's way too long. The shank is way too long for this um, pristine action. And the pristine is 416 stainless steel from memory. 
uh, it's hard to describe how smooth this action really is. It's, it's something else. Yeah, that four pounds of, of opening pressure is definitely noticeable. That's remarkably light. So that'll be something I think that shooters value. And I don't know when these are going to hit the market in numbers, but I have a feeling that you're looking at probably uh, a, a very successful action. And I, whenever I you know, get actions that look viable to me and not just sort of gimmicks, um, which the pristine definitely isn't. I take out the Wichita, which I've had for years. This is my ultimate target rifle. You can see uh, you'll be puzzled by it. There's no ejection port here, and there's no ejection port here either. And that's because to load the Wichita, I'll turn it around so that you can see. I think it says Wichita, doesn't it? Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't show up very well. Anyway, to load the Wichita, you actually have to remove the bolt and then place the cartridge in the bolt face. There's the locking. Lock time is extremely fast and the whole rig is incredible. Uh, right now it has a heavy 6PP seed barrel. I think we shot this once at the range and uh, you know, the usual story, I thought I was missing the, the bullets just uh, pile up on each other. Uh, so, yeah, getting back to the pristine action, I think that they are going to offer just about everything that you could want. Um, different sizes of actions, different sizes of bolt faces. Uh, obviously, this means that this is the wrong trigger, but I explained that. It's just people will immediately write me about something so that this means this is set up for a trigger that has safe and fire um, in the trigger mechanism that's what that would mean and um, yeah i think they've they've got just about everything right i'm not sure if there's a coating on this steel but whatever it is it has a slickness i'm actually not sure what you would compare it to maybe some of the blazers the, the older blazers, some of them had that, that slickness. Just a, a remarkable action. Oh, and that, um, that bolt head, um, I'll take it out again. When I was looking at it, for some reason it reminded me of my best long range target rifle, which is the Kepler. That's, we looked at this, it's hard for me to hold it even. Uh, it's heavy, but... Um, this is a, you know, a first-class German target rifle with the Kepler action and the longer bolt handle gives you leverage so that you, you, what you have what seems like a lighter bolt lift. But if we put a long bolt handle on that pristine, then we would re really have no force at all required to uh, take the, to lift the bolt. Got a lot of stuff here to manage today, but that's okay. And here is what I wanted to show you. There's the, there's the uh, bolt head on the Kepler. And this Kepler, uh, in this rifle anyway, you know, routinely is shooting, I don't know, it, it seems like a quarter minute of angle. Maybe that's not even that great these days, but great for me. Uh, this is a 308. So, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of great features. And um, quite interestingly, it's um, made in Canada, which reminds me, uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I was chatting with uh, some fellows in a, a parking lot. And uh, they, we were talking about guns and what have you. And the guy said, uh, not the pristine, this was about another... It was about a cooey. And the guy said, yeah, it's made in Canada. And the other guy says, where's Canada? I didn't say anything. And the other guy said, I think Canada is an island in the Pacific. 
And uh, the other guy said, I, I thought it was the second biggest country on earth. And I felt I was in a TV show because then the other guy said, well, it's a really big island. Anyway, it, it is a big island. And this action is made in, in Canada. They've done a fantastic job. You can see gas relief ports all over the place in case something goes wrong uh, with the ammunition. And I, I probably wouldn't mind if they had a, you know, a selection of bolt handles. I like these tactical handles, but I also like more conventional handles. You know, if I'm putting together a custom hunting rifle. And probably just to close, because I don't know how much more you can take. Uh, this is a beefy action. One of the reasons I showed you the Wichita, which I'll take out again, is if you want accuracy, of course you have to remove all variables and action harmonics are really important. So a stiff action, everybody knows this, but I'll repeat it anyway. A really stiff action, uh, you know, good steel, that's important. You can see they didn't mill down anything in the back here. So this is ultra stiff and a fantastic action. And this looks to me uh, like a complete winner. Uh, it's possible for a sporting version, they may mill down some parts of the action. Like you, you could mill a couple of flats here and not really affect uh, the hunting accuracy. And it deserves, you know, a more modern trigger. Uh, I'm not sure about this rail, whether it comes with the rail, probably or maybe not. But as it is, it's, um, yeah, it's something to watch out for. So, oh, and I was in touch with a fellow named Marcus at Pristine, just a terrific fellow. And we, you know, we discussed everything. And they're getting organized to go into a full production with all kinds of sizes and bolt heads and there's you know there's a lot more to be known and we'll we'll be doing more videos on this on this pristine action but if you have a chance to uh you know look for one or put your name on a list someplace it's i think it's worth it far better than those ones with the light primer strikes and weird bolt movements and i've seen some pretty bizarre stuff anyway uh did I show you everything? Uh, probably. Oh well, this this is this is worth showing. This is a, a Grunig and L Miger action from Germany. Uh, since we're talking about all these ultra accurate actions, uh, that could be built up into a great rifle. But I don't know. Is it as good as this pristine seems to be? Uh, you know, these are these are kind of. Um, let's say um, older designs. The Pristine has something new about it. And I like that addressing the bolt lift. A lot of times you turn the whole rifle, let, opening the bolt. You can see two ejectors in the bolt face there probably. And then I have here the old workhorse, which is my Siamese Mauser 98. And just for fun, I used the whiteout on it because I was painting everything with whiteout and a perfect bolt engagement also just like the just like the pristine all right well didn't show you my savage target rifle but that's a lot to digest thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all next time and thank you pristine for supplying the action actually i should thank reliable and nick and um that's about it take care until we meet again